Now, we begin. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Sergeant Miles, back with some more Lowry gameplay. And today, I'm versus Revenge in the top lane versus Camille. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check me out on TV Dirty Mobs, where I climb on the main account daily, challenger uh, games. So, yeah, we're versus Revenge. A uh, really good top lane player. Uh, had a pretty good year, I think, in LCS. I don't keep up too much, but... Yeah, he's, very, he's playing Camille, the no-flash Camille. So he's got Ignite Teleport. Yeah. Good Q there at a Prime on the uh, E knockup. Allow you never, you never win the level 1 or 2 trades into into Camille. So as soon as Camille hits that, gets level E, it's just over. You're just AFK until you hit level 3. Now if I'm, I am level 3 and I can stand between, between those two tentacles on the side, it, it's really powerful. Uh, he also has Jamikin... Banana uh, as their jungler, the Ivern main. Now, one thing I do find when I play Verse Revenge is that he kind of gets the TF play treatment, where he gets like perma ganked for him. Which is really annoying, but it's just something I keep in mind, so I'm kind of afraid of being like dove at, at this angle. I'm trying to clear as many minions as I can. Close. If I could have gotten that angle, it would have been really good on the E. And I missed Cannon, so not good overall. Pretty clean auto E by him. I think it's pretty uh, preposterous that he can do that, but that's what a uh, like 180 shield will do, I guess. Again, we're just kind of playing it slow. If we ever do, because he's not running flash stuff, if we ever do get a really good position, we can absolutely turn. Now, you can see if I didn't have the turret damage there, there's no way I kill the spirit. But because I have the turret to help, I can actually kill that. Really powerful. Beautiful E. Auto debut. Hit a little bit. Q backwards. Again, he doesn't have flash. He doesn't have flash. Beautiful. That wall is an amazing spot to play versus any melee champion. Uh, because the tentacle slam angles are just really strong and they're more likely to hit. And there's a lot going on. Get on the fact that he doesn't have... Eight. Uh, flash, so if it, I ever get him in a position like that and he overcommits, he has no out. You know, he, his whole out there was just literally trying to get a kill. I want to, like, teleport mid off the team, but I can't let this wave sit. I've got to get up here and try to push it really quickly. There is a threat that Ivern will come up here and, uh, you know, destroy me, but... That could have been really, really good. The, the most dangerous part of the game for me right now is the next level. Level 5 to 6 in this position is really, really dangerous. I do have Flash. So if uh, Camille randomly goes in on me, I should probably suspect that I'm being ganked by Ivern. Beautifully. Pack the W out. Auto W, yep. Another Q Max game. I've just been feeling Q Max a little bit more lately. I don't go to every game. Some games I will go E Max. But. The extra tentacle damage has been pretty impactful as of late. Hey, level 3 here. Or level 6. Beautiful E. Beautiful. Dude, what is that distance? One time? Yeah. It's not a big deal. I think that was the right play. E level 6 immediately flash hold on top. If the tentacles slam a little bit better, uh, I get a kill, so it's whatever. I think it's worth going for. I see their armor and bot, so I have no reason to back off. If Camille should have reset, and if uh, Revenge didn't, then I can probably go for a kill. If he does reset, then I get a free play. But I'm really happy with the alchemy either way. You know, I didn't get the kill, and that sucks, but I don't tilt over it. I just take it for what it is. You know, it, it, is, it is what it is. Yeah, we're up 9 CS, we're up a plate, we're up a kill, we're in a really good position. I, don't scare, I, don't die, and I, don't stop. I go ahead and grow the early tabbies. I have found movement speed to really be really important in games anymore. So you see me rushing boots earlier than I used to. Now, the boots don't really help dodge a Camille E, because Camille E is a, uh, I call it a pseudo skill shot. It's a skill shot, but honestly, if the enemy player doesn't have a dash or have any blinks or anything, then any Camille should really hit it. Uh, 
We don't have ult, so we're going to chill. Camille does have uh, ult and, I think, ignite. So we really don't want to go for a play. Check something real quick. It is terrible to be cool. I want to make sure I hit record. Y'all have no idea the amount of times I have not hit record, and I've done all this commentary for nothing. Then I have to do it again. Ult on back up. Try to kill these minions and then land an E. It's okay. I think I should have queued that minion and then E through. I do kind of want to waste their jungler's time. I also have my team coming up as well. Ult, W, Q, W, E. Kite. So good. Oh, you know he's tilted after that one. Oh. Through the ignite and everything. Yeah, I didn't want to let that opportunity go. I had my team coming up. I was in a position to to do well even without the team back up. The only downside was my E was on cooldown for a really long time at the start of that fight. But you see the wink and you see there is a line of play, right? I bait the Camille E, ult, use W and Q to, to heal until your E comes back up, and then hit your E and then kite. Now, this is a pretty common thing that a lot of Camille's, Ribbons, or Aurelia's will do versus me, is once they start winning the lane, they'll just start perma-rooming, and they'll just avoid me. Because their champions are so horrendously uh, over-tuned at making plays, they don't have to really farm. They can just, like, go around and... Most players will just end to end with them. That's the way Adrian Rubin gets a lot of wins on me, actually. And it's a it's a fair strategy. I mean, you start promo roaming. Can't win lane, might as well. See, I like uh, the Celebrocky game yesterday, where I wasn't really playing to the lane. I was just playing to, to beat the the enemy team. Actually, if you notice, the common denominator here is I'm in the games first off, and second off is Kane's on my team. I had Ezreal in my last team, too. Didn't I? Huh. Interesting, uh, you know, little coincidences. Good CS in here all around. I feel good the pressure because my ult's about to come back up. He can't yellow E into me because I have the tentacle plus E plus I'm... I'm a little bit ahead. I'm not crazy ahead, though. The real advantage I have are my boots. Nice. Tentacle. Whatever. You know what's crazy? She doesn't have uh, boots, but she, because of her Q movement speed buff, she gets basically the ability to have boots and dodge at the same uh, speed. Which is cool. It's really cool. Oh, beautiful reaction. Winding that E as I was getting knocked up. Don't manage to miss cannon, though. I could go for the dive here. What I'm trying to do is actually bait her to E into me, and then I'll E her back. I accept that I was way too slow there. Looking like a boomer. I have teleport coming up. I see their jungler and support bot. But I could take a fight, but I could also just go ahead and reset. Yeah. The thing is, with Camille having Ignite, it's really easy for her to turn the play. And now I'm in a better position to, to meet any teleports. Beautiful ult, or Q, beautiful E, flash, try to finish. Lame. Nice. I might end up getting out alive, but 3-0-2 in this in this game. It's their team comp is built in a way that I can absolutely carry. Ivern's a you know low DPS alpha champion um, that can be relatively easy to land these on. Daisy can be annoying, but oh, whatever. Braum and Camille are both good targets for me to land these as well. So definitely a game where I can carry. And obviously our team's doing well too, it's 15 to 2. 
But even though our team's doing well, there's absolutely nothing to scoff at in how I played top lane. I played it very cleanly. I get Drake. I'm gonna, if you're ever unsure about where to run, just run to mid. Because even if you run to mid and you need it to go top, it's not that much longer of a path to go top afterwards. But if a play breaks out, you have the option of going mid. That's actually something I learned from Core JJ, uh, watching his videos on support. Is he talks about that a lot. You know, you never run directly to your, your lane. You always path through the jungle. Uh, that way, if a play opens up in a lane, you can you can move quickly. And if uh, no play always opens up, then you can easily get to where you need to go anyway. So you just lose a couple seconds. So instead of, say, running to bot lane as support, you just run through bot jungle. Then you can peel off the mid if you need to, but you can also just go straight to bot lane. That is an insane E, I want to point out. I should not have thrown that. Because I don't have ult. I don't have a backup plan. But I should have if I miss that E and then Camille just jumps on me. Now, Camille doesn't know I don't have ult. But sometimes Camille's don't care. Sometimes these players will just go on you anyways. Because they only perceive the win condition to be your E. So if a player thinks they can outplay your, uh, your ult... It doesn't matter if you have it or not. And if you don't have it and they go on you, then you really lose. My team was pathing top, so Revenge just, just ditched. Which is the correct play. He was going to get dove and killed. But on the plus side is I get a lot of plates. I get to really snowball my lead even more. As well as bot. Hopefully they don't like troll mid. You never know in solo queue. Ooh. Close. Yeah, they're really strong even as three, and the enemy team's so low that they can just sit there and poke out. We're just gonna crash this and probably reset get our item. There's no we're not gonna like get tier two. Oh, we're gonna push anyways. Basically we're gonna match mid and bot aggression is what we're doing. Nice. This guy's insane. Now oh, whatever he flashes. Doesn't have flash there, he's dead. Uh, that is an absolute insane thing to do. Silas is... A lot of he's one of Silas' hardest counters in the game. Revenge right behind Ezreal, so the e, the R missed. But uh, Ezreal's so far ahead that he can still get the... At least traded. If Revenge gets hit by that R, then Revenge just dies. So, still a good play to, to dodge the ult and get the trade kill. We have Gore Drinker. My, my build lately has been Gore Drinker, Serex Cage, Death Sands, and 2 and 3 can be swapped, uh, depending on the team compositions and how strong everyone is, and, you know, do I want Death Sands healing and and stagger effect, or do I want Serex Cage shield and heal? It just depends on the game state and the game variables. But if you're not sure, if you're not sure, just build Gore Drinker, Serex Cage, Death Sands. Just do that. Like, it's fine. This isn't a, this isn't like a big problem you should have in your games. I see. I don't have ult though, so this is kind of troll. Daisy is really, really annoying, so I, I really do want to kill Daisy. Nice. Because she, what Ivers will do is just keep her in front of you, and then you can never land your E. I, thought, I still don't have R, but I'm kind of going for the red, anyway, red buff anyways. Leona got it, good. Beautiful R. It's a for an easy kill on the Braum. This is like kind of throwy, but it's kind of okay because we're far enough ahead. You know, we are denying the jungle from Ivern. Which is really impactful. Not only is it impactful from a gold accumulation point of view, but it's also impactful from a mental state. Uh, being the jungler on the enemy team and having your jungle just, just taken from you all the time. Especially for Ivern. I mean, think of the champion. Ivern loves the, the jungle. Hates to see them all die. Rift's value. I used to hype, harp on, you know, Rift uh, back in the day. Harp, Rift's value, especially Rift 2, went up a lot with the... Uh, the amount of gold they infuse into the tier 2 turrets, you see, that's two kills. It used to only be, like, one kill. Uh, and that is a big difference. Ow, turret. 
do have R. I don't have much mana them. So if I if I do trade, I'd have to get a kill pretty quickly. I say that because I have presence of mind, which is one of the runes I run instead of uh, a lot of people like triumph. I prefer the mana. I think uh, Alawi absolutely goes um, all the time in big team fights. I don't see why having extra health would do that much. If I'm going to want to fight, it's usually already won or lost. The thing that keeps me going in a fight and keeps me healing is having the mana throughput. I'm going to teleport to this fight so we don't throw. Big ol' play, big ol' play. Really? Everyone has flash? Get up with you. Alright, Camille being a bullcrap champion, killing everyone. Very cool. Miss everything, woo yeah. Okay, whatever. <gasps> she hit something? No, I don't think so. Okay. Ooh. Eh, I graded on that E. I should have just thrown it at Braum. I went for Camille. I went kind of went for like an uh, E that might hit both, depending on how they path. Vex is doing absolute work. Beautiful E. Two tentacles with Gore Drinker. That, those are the E's that end up with us getting like two, two turrets here. And it, and it, we, the beauty of us sit, keeping the enemy team there is it. Let us get dragon for free as well, because as you can see on the main map, Candace taking Infernal Drake. Absolute massive amount of gold, so we can get Sarah's Cage and start building into our Death Sense. And we'll go bot. Drake was just taken, so it's kind of like our lane to be bot lane. Not much is going to go on for the next few minutes. Might as well take Krugs on the way. Botlane's gonna push into me. So this is uh, keeping the Krugs re- Keep the Krugs turning, so to speak. Doesn't take me very long anyways. I really get a, a week. Conquer doing a whopping 7 healing this game. Very impressive. Very good. You saw the amp damage, you know, that ramps up from all the adaptive power, which we have a really good way to utilize. Maybe one day I'll get a uh, spicy and go back to like Omni Stone or something. That'd be kind of that'd be kind of cool. The, the the beauty of the precision tree though is the whole tree. It's not just the rune. That's why I don't like Dark Harvest at all. The e oh, he's gonna contest me here. Nice E. Dodge the Everfrost. Kite out. I can destroy Silas. Oh, they have to hold squat down a row. I needed that spirit to die quicker. I think that spirit had, um... That spirit was incredibly tanky. If I kill that spirit quicker, I get death... No, I don't have death sense. I'm just stupid. Never mind. I was gonna commentate that, like I had death sense, but I didn't have it. The beauty of that play is that we can just take Baron anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I was prepared for like a 1v3 with uh, Camille, Silas, Ivern. I definitely can win that. BMF showing up makes it really hard. She brings a lot of damage that is really hard for me to avoid. Because versus uh, Camille and Silas, what I can do is I can E ult and I can use that damage threat of all my tentacles to get them to back off and buy me time to heal and, and sustain damage and land E's off cooldown. But it's hard to do that versus MF. She can kind of sit on the edge of all the uh, damage potential I have. No sieging. Hopefully we don't throw. I'm about to show up with my E ult. And start turning this. Beautiful E. Oh, my team's leaving. I don't want to leave. I just got here. They have to protect their base, so we'll start working. Oh, GG. They F up. Okay, nice. Really clean game versus uh, Revenge's Camille. If you like the video, subscribe. I'll see you all next time.